Hello, and welcome to my Etrian Odyssey Let's Play Prologue. Uh, my name is Eric, and before we get started, I feel I have to warn you, this is my first Let's Play video, so please be patient with me. Today I'm just going to cover a little bit of the history of this game. Um, Etrian Odyssey 4 is coming out on February 26th, and this is the demo for it. It's clearly the fourth game in the, tri or in the uh, series. And if you haven't heard of it, um, it's an RPG by Atlas, which is a Japanese RPG maker. Um, <clears throat> the game is quite well received by people who understand what it is. Um, basically, it's a... Uh, it's based off of Wizardry, which was one of the first commercial RPGs for the PC. Uh, actually, it was made, but made, um, wasn't made first for IBM PCs. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's old, 1981. Anyways, Wizardry, basically, uh, it's based off Dungeons and Dragons, um, it's a dungeon crawler, as we call it. Um, it takes place in one self-contained dungeon, as opposed to... Oh, this is starting over, so I'm just going to close it to conserve battery. <sighs> Sorry, I wanted to take that take right away because I only have 23 more activations for that demo. Anyways, uh, you'll, you'll also have to excuse any tangents I go on. Um, wizardry... This is the sixth one, it's for Super Nintendo, although I have played the original, I don't own it. Um, basically, it's a first person dungeon crawler, um, kind of explained that already. Uh, you explore a dungeon, uh, it's grid based, every time you move forward you take a step on the grid, um, makes for very easy mapping which was what you pretty much had to do with these games because the dungeon was quite complex and dangerous. Um, what Etrian Odyssey did was they took that concept and came out for DS in 2007 in the US, took that concept and brought the mapping aspect onto the DS. You map on the bottom screen which is very, very handy. Um, cause other, cause although I personally like mapping with graph paper, a lot of people don't like looking down every 10 seconds to make a notation on the map. Um, and let's see, there was of course also two other games that came out. Um, two I haven't played much of because I didn't actually get it until after three. It was a little tricky to find. One I bought brand new back in the day, but it came out a little over a year afterwards, and, uh, although I love these games, they're the kind of games I only play for, like, five hours at a time, and then I set them aside for maybe two or three months and get back to it. I haven't even gotten past the second floor on Etrian Odyssey 2. Um... Etrian Odyssey 3 came out in 2010, and it's widely regarded as the best in the series so far. Um, basically, what happened was there were a few flaws in, in one. Um, it was a very difficult game. Not as difficult or as grindy as its reputation says, but... For, a, for an RPG, which is generally a very, very easy genre of games, it's quite difficult. Um, Etrian Odyssey 2 kind of, kind of pushed it further than that. Um, made it more hardcore and less accessible. Um, oh, and I'm sorry. Um, part, part of the flaws of the first one, too, was that it was rather unbalanced. Um, each class served a purpose, but the individual skills ranged wildly from useless to overpowered. And the translation wasn't that great. Um, the best skill in the game, um, 
the translation isn't accurate at all towards it. So you probably won't find out about it until until you're done spending skill points in what you want on that class and you just start spending extra skill points. Um, anyways, Neutrino Odyssey 3 is regarded as the best for a couple reasons. Um, one is the classes um, are quite a bit more balanced um, and also it has subclassing which eventually as you go through the game um, you can unlock a second class for your characters and that lets you spend skill points in that class um, hopefully everyone's familiar with the concept of a skill tree because if not this is going to go completely over their heads but the only difference in the third one between your class and your subclass was each each skill had one passive or each class had one passive skill that was only ac accessible if that was their main class so even if you didn't like the class that you started out with chances are you could make up for it with your subclass um, the bosses are less um, stat checks basically um, they all have specific strategies to deal with so um, that's kind of not like what the other ones were. The bosses were just stat checks. So, um, you could grind your way through it. Um, this one, it's a little bit easier, but grinding isn't the key to victory. It's strategy. Um, and let's see. Where else do I go? Um, if you've played, um, Shin Megami Tensai Strange Journey, it uses the same engine as the first three Etrian Odyssey games. Um, the difference is that the map is completely automatically filled out for you. You don't draw to the map at all with your stylus. And it's also quite a drastically different game in itself. But it's still, still basically a first person dungeon crawler, at least as far as appearances go. Um, and then a couple other games I suggest is the Dark Spire. It's basically um, basically a spiritual successor to Wizardry. Um, it has a lot of the a lot of the same design um, game design issues, um, but it's got a fantastic soundtrack and a really cool art style. So it's basically modern wizardry and also um if you can get a hold of it uh dungeon master for super nintendo also came out on several different systems i just happen to have it for super nintendo it's a little different it focuses on puzzles and um and the combat is it's not real time but it's cooldown based um so basically why should you get into these games well they're very well designed. Um, battles um, take quite a bit of well, not, I mean, they take strategy to win. You, you, but um, I don't know. It's hard to say. Basically, the reason I love these games is it really challenged what I um, what I felt made a good RPG. Uh, before this, I thought that RPGs were just about story. Um, and well, these games, some people say they have no story. That's not true. Um, they just have the stories in the background, basically. Actually, um, the first one, the story is really good. It has a very good twist at the end, and um, it's just it's just not the front and center. And the gameplay is excellent. It has a, some flaws, but. I mean, everything does. Um, e and Odyssey 3 actually chose to put the storyline more front and center, and it's actually really good. Um, and there's... It's not linear, for one thing, which, you know, I can take it or leave it, but some people love that. Um, there's several choices throughout the game that affect 
the ending, the enemies you face, and the classes you unlock. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're really good games. Um, you kind of have to go it in, into it with an open mind if the only exposure you've had to RPGs is uh, Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest or Tales, because although there is a story, it's not the draw of the game. And, al this, and although the story is good, it's not the draw of the game. Um, also, um, you know, I, you hear Japanese RPGs and Western RPGs, um, I like them both, but a lot of people, they see this and they're like, oh, that's a Japanese RPG, extremely, extremely linear, no character customization, uh, no choices, um, story-based, they're actually, I would say, more of a Western RPG because you make your own characters from scratch, you customize them as they go, um, as they level up, there's, there's choices to be made in all of them, uh, the first two, I know the first one, it's just basically affects what class you unlock, but the third one, there's three different endings, um, and two different classes to unlock, and even, like, in the individual quests, there's choices that you can make. Um, it's not the front and center, like, in a Bioware game, but it's there. Um, and also, it, like, if you have tried Wizard, Wizardry and didn't like it, they are modern enough to uh, get rid of those rough edges from Wizardry. Some things I didn't like about Wizardry was uh, starting out with random stats. Maybe you just sit there and roll a character for hours until you got acceptable stats. Also, there was no way to tell like, what the equipment did, how much better it was than what you were wearing. Um, Etrian Odyssey, it, it'll at least tell you when your stats will go up. Um, it doesn't have that layer of intentional obfuscation. So, um, really good games. Uh, and, um, if you if you are if you play the Etrian Odyssey 4 demo and you like them these are actually they just got reprinted from Atlas so you can get any of them again I might suggest skipping two uh getting three first and then maybe going back to one just to see how different it is um so hopefully that's helpful um later I'm going to go into uh gameplay um just the basics of it. So, thanks. Bye.